pause. Yeah, I would have been on sooner, but we uh, finally, third time was the charm, got through a fight on Boulder's Gate. Which fight? Um, the the Orthon uh, dude, Raphael's enemy. <laughs> I never did it. So never did that, that fight. That's interesting because we didn't. It? Because Phil was uh, the same way when I told him. He was like, "You never did any of the Raphael." Stuff. I was like, "No, I didn't. I don't." So I don't know what. So what? Well, yeah. So initially, oh wait, we you're talking about the guy in the down in the caves. Yes. Oh yeah, I killed that motherfucker. Uh, we had quite the, so he's got the last of the little orb things that you needed to go do the night side thing. Mm -hmm. So the first time we attempted it, we were like, okay, we're just gonna fight him and, you know, call it a day. Uh, the fuck nope. That didn't work out well. Uh, because all of our, our entire team is built around like fire damage effectively. Oh, and. I knew at some point it was going to bite us in the ass. And it was at this point that it bit us in the ass. So we ended up starting the fight. Uh, everybody else died. And my character is, he's like a brick shit house, but he also has a very particular set of skills. One of those being getting the fuck out really fucking fast. So everybody died. I booked it out of the fight and just got withers to bring everybody back. <laughs> so then we had that glitch that we talked about the other day uh, th that I had mentioned where everybody just decided to fall off the platform. And that's uh -huh. when we lost all our progress. We went yeah. back through, got back to where we were and uh, then ended up saying, look, all we need is the orb. Get in and get out. So ran in, got the orb, escaped combat, did the night song stuff. Fine. We thought we were done. Kayla got to bone Carlac. It was great. And then, uh, she happened to talk to uh, talk to Asterian and Asterian's like, hey, Raphael offered us a deal. Are you going to kill this dude? And she was like, we were like, well, you know, we want to make sure that we like do right by Asterian because Asterian's also Kayla's like number two next to Carla. <laughs> um, so I was like, OK, so we have to go in and kill that guy. And it was the third time that we tried and it was a long and hard fought battle. But damn it, did we finally get through it? That's what I was doing. <laughs> I see. I got gotcha. you. No problem. No problem. He he wasn't that tough for me, weirdly enough. I died once against him. But the only reason I died was he like knocked one of my dudes off a cliff, but like threw a window mm. off a cliff so that he was like. You know what I mean? It ended up putting him like three and a half miles away, basically. So yeah. I'm like, I can't get him back into the fight fast enough. And then they killed me, you know? Yeah, we had the problem of, uh, of course, the fire damage thing. Mm -hmm. But he kept being a bitch and turning invisible. Yeah, yeah. He, he'd do some shit, go invisible, go somewhere else. But occasionally he would fuck up and throw those bombs out and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but... I did shit a brick at one point because we got him down to seven HP and I don't know how the dude was programmed in the game, but I think it's like certain HP points. He throws out these bombs. There were 15 of those things yeah. on the field at one those point. Those things are scary. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my God. So then I decided, I figured out you could pick them up and throw them. So I had Gale, I had Gale throw it at the displacer piece, but before I threw it, I looked at it and it was like something stupid, like, four to 36 damage per bomb. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what in the whole ass <laughs> shit? Somehow I was like, we were like, okay, we took out the dude, but my character was still standing in the middle of where there were like seven of them. I'm like, Hey, just so you know, I'm going down when these go off. So find a way to use revivify to get me back somehow magically took the force of all of them when I only had like 50 HP left. Nice. Nice. Still standing. <laughs> Got a couple of good dice rolls on that one. I can't yeah. Remember, there was something I did to keep him visible. And I cannot remember well, for the life of me. There was like a power or something yeah. that I used that so, I just kept like keeping him visible to me. The problem that we had this time was uh, we didn't have Carlac with us because Carlac can use branding smite. Uh, and prevent him from going invisible. That might have been what I did. Yeah, yeah. Time to get your fix. It's a horrible gaming podcast. It's not good. 
It's not great, horrible gaming podcast. It's not even what you would call fair. It's really not that good. Horrible gaming podcast. Hello, my name is Zachary with Old Man Gaming. You, dear listener, have chosen for whatever reason to listen to another horrible gaming podcast. I am not alone. Usually, Neil, aka a tiny wizard. Yeah, that's who's with me. That's who's with me. Um, trying to find new ways to say it, and, it's, and, and a new way is to cut into my time. Yes, it's not, it's not gonna go over well for him. Uh, <laughs> there, there are at least two or three people who would love to do this job. Neil, love it. That's not true. Two or three. <laughs> not true. Um, all right. Well, we're going to do a podcast for you guys tonight. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. We're going to just talk about video game stuff. Uh, but before we do that, we've got to thank some people who made this possible. Behind our ugly mugs, you're seeing a custom graphic that was provided by Mr. Mark Bell. And of course, the theme song for this show and all shows here at Old Man Gaming is provided by the man who makes the music, my brother Nick Van Sliders. We thank him for that. Do want to just shout out? There was definitely an ad attached to this show before you got in for shirts. We have shirts now. Go check out shirts. I'm gonna plug them again at the end of the show. But shirts, wizardsdressboy.com. Uh, you can purchase our shirts. Um, and yeah, we'll be right back with fan traction. Horrible gaming podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to fan traction. Our most important segment, that is where we, the co-hosts, we talk to you guys, the fans, anywhere your comments are, and we read them out, talk about them. So, uh, we have one comment here <clears throat> from Jason. Words are few, I have spoken. I could waste a thousand years wrapped in sorrow, words are token. Come inside and catch my tears. You've been taking talking, but believe me, if it's true... You do not know this boy loves without a reason. I'm prepared to let you go. Do you really want to hurt me? Do you really want to make me cry? Uh, Zach, to the AAA gaming industry, probably, <laughs> says Jason. Uh, yeah, that about sums it up, I think. I, I don't think I could do it better than a little boy George there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I... Uh, done with those guys i am gonna really quickly look over here because there is i swear there was a comment that we didn't have from like um william haluan i could have swore well if it deleted your post please repost somewhere and i'll read it next week because i was gonna say isn't this like not the first time that something like this has happened no no, no it's definitely happened to him before but i right. could have swore i saw one go up and I don't see one now, so I am going to assume that either I was crazy the first time or he posted one and it got deleted. If it did, please repost, sir, and I will read it next time and catch up, I promise. Uh, all right, and that's it. That's, that's all the fan traction. That's everything everybody had to say uh, for last time. Exciting, I know. So what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about our favorite off-brand genres, our favorite genres that aren't like your your big open world what uh, hubaloos or whatever. We're gonna talk about like the off-brand ones, and uh, yeah, that's it. And then we'll probably do some news. Obviously, Neil will be doing the news, and I will be talking about it. And then we'll be very selective on what I chose to talk about. <laughs> it might be a short show today, guys, uh, just because we didn't have a lot of fan interaction. And also, we are doing this on a Monday because I am an idiot. And um, <laughs> uh, we basically, I have to basically record this, edit it, import it, export it all tonight. These are very lengthy processes, so uh, so yeah, so it might be so a little you better. Bit appreciate today. it, God damn it! <laughs> That's not what I meant. Uh, <laughs> but if you really want to appreciate it, buy a shirt. <laughs> there you go. So it's a good way to appreciate it. There you go. It's a good way to appreciate it, right? Right, right, right. Uh, all right. Um, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 
A talking point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to a talking point. Today we're looking at off-brand genres, our favorites. Uh, we don't have any set number or anything about this. We're just going to talk about some of our favorites, uh, chew up some space, chit-chat about video games. Uh, Neil, why don't you start us off? So I think one that uh, does not get enough love that I absolutely thoroughly enjoy that's just a weird grab bag of different kinds of games Okay. Um, is party games. Okay. Party games, definitely what springs to mind immediately whenever I think of a party game. I think of either Mario Party or right. something like Guitar Hero or Rock Band. Okay. Uh, and and it's, it's kind of weird because the enjoyment of those games, I feel like, is thoroughly dependent on being able to play with other people yeah. and usually being able to play with at least four people. Yeah. Um, especially with something like Mario Party, you know, you have to have the, the group of four people or else it turns into everybody against the computer <laughs> and you don't necessarily get as cutthroat as you need to get when playing in uh, the actual Mario Party game itself. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the music games uh, like the Guitar Heroes, your rock bands, hell, even DJ Hero, technically. Um, those were always so weird because there was such that high bar to entry. Mm. You had to have all the pieces of the things. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, now, you know, compared to back then, it was like a badge of honor to have all of the things. And like, you were the guy, you were the kid who had all the stuff. And now I am the 34 year old man who has the plastic <laughs> stuff all over right. here. Just barely on the other side of this bookshelf is the pile of my various guitar and drum sets and everything like that from the uh, various music games uh, I played. Right. Um, and then of course, you know, there's that weird bit about, you know, especially once the like Xbox 360 and everything caught on the micro DLCs of music mm, that mm -hmm. were, it was just a steady flow. I mean, that only um, just recently ended and only correctly. recently just ended. Yes. Uh, those are, uh, yeah, those are kind of like a snapshot in time. Uh, and I will tell you, especially the music games, uh, they were very much a product of the then and not the now, because yeah. if you look back at, you know, guitar hero did guitar hero live and yeah, uh, I think even Rock Band, no, Rock Band didn't try to come back. Um, but any of those games that have tried to come back and like reinvent themselves, uh, I remember Guitar Hero Live two years after it launched was on sale at Five Below. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. nobody was, nobody's really gunning for those games anymore. But Mario Party really has its spot. Um, yeah. Uh, party games tough, right? Because yeah. you have to have people to play party games. Like, yeah. like I mean, I think of party games too, like Among Us. Like, I know that's more of a social. Like, people might consider that as like a social deductive game or whatever. But it's a party game. It's a party game. You need a lot of people to play it. As fun as it is, I think I've only really ever played it like two or three times. Uh, and some of them were streams here because. That was that. That was the only time we could get that many people to play. You know, enough people to play that game. Um, I do want to say there was this. There's this one game on Discord because Discord has like its own like activity based games that you can play with people on there. Um, kind of like Facebook has and and all of those like social media platforms have. And one of the games they have is this game called Gartic Phone. Um, and Stella wanted to play it with me and Melissa. So me and Melissa were playing on our phones. She was playing on her computer. Basically what it was is it it asks everybody to write a sentence, whatever comes to their mind. Then it randomly picks a different person of the people involved to then write a picture of that sentence or draw a picture of that sentence without knowing who it came from or any context, just the sentence. Then, then it, it yet again switches up who gets receives the thing and it sends the picture to three different people or however many people you're playing with and then asks you to describe what the picture is of uh and that was super i, I remember that was like a two-hour evening with me 
Melissa and Stella that was super fun. So there's definitely a place for party games. I enjoy party games. I have Super Mario Party upstairs. It's just, again, it's one of those things like... It's really fun when you got people there, but when you don't have people there, there's almost no reason to play it. So it's hard to like have that reason yeah. to purchase it, you know? Yeah, especially like with Mario Party. Um, I have Mario Party 5, I think it is, on the GameCube. Mm -hmm. um, and unlocking the stuff for it, like the final level and all the other, you know, things like that, it's mm -hmm. such a drag because yeah. you have to do it so, uh, single player mm -hmm. and you have to meet all these weird conditions you know when you're playing a game that's already based yeah. off of effectively random chance in a lot of cases not all the time come to find out uh i don't know if you've ever looked into that but the game does start to favor people at the end <laughs> um uh, but yet yeah, no they they like actually proved it like there's there's like an algorithm effectively that takes a bunch of stuff into consideration <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's one of those, you basically have to have the people to play it to really have it be a thing. Yeah. Uh, not so much that I think the music games, because you had to really practice those to get good anyways, but, um, yeah. Yeah. But the music games were, were really fun when you were with, you know, Oh yeah. Even band, if you were you know? sucking, you know, yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, especially when they added the mic and I could sing while other people were playing music. God, it was so much mm -hmm. fun. So much fun. Um, okay. So my first one, I, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised by this. I, I am required by law to say this, I think, uh, just given everything I've ever said in my entire life. It's a 2D retro brawler. There's, there's nothing better. There's nothing better. Mm -hmm. I want them on all things, in all things. I, I grew up with the 2D brawler. I mean, before it was actually called retro, when it was just the thing that you played at the time. It's just a brawler. Yeah, Streets Side of Rage. Brawler. Streets of Rage was one of the first games me and my brother played together on our Sega Genesis. Um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game, I remember there was a couple games. There was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game, uh, and then there was the X-Men game. We would specifically go to arcades when they still existed uh, in, in Severance Mall, and uh, uh, Eastwood Mall, we would go to these arcades, or we would find uh, the certain uh, movie theaters that had the because every movie theater had like two or three arcade games off to the side uh, that had them, uh, and we would just just pump coins into them. The Ninja Turtle one, obviously the OG arcade, uh, the X Men one was freaking phenomenal, and then uh, Streets of Rage was our Sega Genesis, and then from that point on, I have just loved brawlers my entire life i am a true brawler fan i am still working and collecting all the achievements for streets of rage 4 uh, uh which is which is fun to just every once in a while like yeah i'm gonna do another level in streets of rage 4 uh and i love that it's getting a renaissance now where we're starting to see these games come back and get new you know features added into them like young souls and rotwood the upcoming Towerborn. Uh, stuff like that, while also having these like throwback classic games like Shredder's Revenge from TMNT and Streets of Rage 4 that just like weren't necessarily doing anything new, but instead like here's all the old games with homage, you know what I mean, playing homage to them. Uh, and I don't see it slowing down anytime soon because people really love these games uh, right now. Uh, and we're still getting them. There was a G.I. Joe one that came out recently. Uh, um, Double Dragon came out with a new game, Gaiden, uh, which was a roguelite of all things. Uh, and they also have a Toxic Avengers game coming out. So uh, I love the 2D Brawler. I love it. Yeah, I almost uh, I almost feel like, yeah, like you'd mentioned, they're kind of having their uh, resurgence right now. Mm -hmm. um, fighting games in general, for the most part, I feel like have had a resurgence in mm -hmm. the past like 10 years uh, with, uh, you know, Street Fighter 4 when that came out kind of brought everything back into the fold. And now we have regular releases for Street Fighter and everything else, uh, attack and, you know, a bunch of other ones like that. Those side scrolling brawlers are really a weird one when you think about it because I feel like it had this like negative stigma 
uh, associated with it. Uh, perception maybe is the better uh, is the better term on this because I feel like people thought of them as a relic of the past but that's just because there was never any sort of innovation in those games they they like just kind of fell off the face of the earth back in what the late 90s um and then out of the blue i think what was it with like castle crashers was like the one that really kind of broke out with that sort of style and got people kind of thinking about that again overall as like a mm -hmm. method of like gaming overall and now you have stuff that's like it's a full like you said homage to those older games while still giving it it like streets of rage 4 when we yeah. played through that mm -hmm. they added that level of like sure you could do combos and stuff before but they almost like said hey why can't we make it like an actual fighting game yeah to put actual commands in there mm -hmm. hey let's do that let the people build some skill with the characters instead of go to next screen beat guys then go to next screen well and like the old streets of rage games there was some minor differences between characters but overall they all kind of had the same maneuvers with streets of rage 4 you know you had a, a completely different play feel for every character which was kind of what they brought to the table you had the very phonetic movement faced cherry who would just run back and forth doing like blitz moves you had shiva who is almost completely aerial based for combat but couldn't pick up weapons uh you know stuff like that like i felt like that was the new thing that streets of rage 4 brought to the table i i do agree castle crashers was i think big in bringing back the resurgence castle crashers was a big deal still even to this day gets play and castle crashers is a great game i played a ton of castle crashers uh, for a very long time. That being said, I think the game that like really kicked off the resurgence is Streets of Rage 4. I think Castle Crashers kind of... I think Castle Crashers was the one that gave the Lizard Cube guys the idea to do Streets of Rage 4, and then it was like, yeah! You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, definitely. So I think that like they both played their parts, but yeah, we're getting a really sweet resurgence in this uh you know river city girls one and two as well um you just there's just so many good 2d brawlers now and does feel like they're starting to innovate in the genre now that it's back and i want this to just keep going and keep keep snowballing um they're they're my favorite they're possibly my favorite kind of games to play you know, there's uh, another uh, to kind of piggyback off of that a little bit because we were talking about like fighters and everything that kind of uh. made me think about one particular game, uh, puzzle fighter, uh, <laughs> puzzle games, yeah, puzzle games. Really, like, I feel like puzzle games are ones that have kind of fallen off uh, in that. You know, the puzzles now are more so like point and click adventures, sort of mm. like uh, solve this, you know, take this to this place and figure out the riddle and stuff like that. I want to put shapes in line with other shapes. I want to match colors. Right. I want to, you know, that sort of stuff and bring an element into it. Like um, there was a uh, was it Marvel Puzzle Quest. Mm -hmm. years ago it's been like 10 years at this point marvel puzzle quest came out and that was that was some shit for me mm -hmm. um because i had never played a puzzle quest before and i didn't realize it was like an actual like you know sub genre right. of the puzzle games um so i went through and like built out my you know three-man team of uh, Marvel characters to go through with this and there was a point in time where i was like number seven on the app as a whole <laughs> like i was mm -hmm. playing it so much it's one of the few like free to play games that i ever played and got really hooked in um yeah i, I feel like puzzles puzzle games are ones that are ripe for some sort of innovation uh especially with the different types of games and everything out there now yeah. that there's been some stuff here and there you know something like tetris 99 mm -hmm. was the most recent innovation and of course tetris effect but, you know, there's more than just Tetris out there. Um, you know, the, the Tetris attack, which is not actually Tetris, the panel de pawn more so like that right. is one that kind of gets ignored so much a little bit. Uh, Puyo Pop, effectively, Puyo, yeah. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Mean Machine. 
same the same thing. Um, those I feel like could get some sort of innovation and brought back in because, weirdly enough, I was actually talking to somebody at work the other day. I love those types of puzzle games because it's the one time that I can let my brain slip into this like lizard brain mm -hmm. where I don't think about anything at all or <laughs> strictly what is happening on that screen. My house could be burning down around me. Yeah. That's how video and games I'm are for me. only yeah. focused on that. Um, I, I love that genre of games, but there's just not a whole heck of a lot of them out there anymore. You know, uh, there's a ton of them. It's just they're all microtransaction-y mobile well, bullshit. Yeah. And, you know, there's a there's a wrestling game that uh, does that, where basically like it's like a puzzle at the bottom, and then matching things, kind of Candy Crush style or whatever you want to say, makes you do certain moves as the wrestler, like the wrestler serves mm -hmm. moves. And, and, and fundamentally, like if you just break it down fundamentally, I cannot remember what it's called. It's like Mayhem or something I want to say, but uh, fundamentally, like you collect different wrestlers to the, your stable, you pick the wrestlers you want to wrestle other wrestlers, and then kind of like you can do some really interesting build and strategy stuff with like what moves they're using at what time and what they're equipped with. But it all ends up boiling down to like microtransaction resources that you have to like upgrade your characters to a point where you can't upgrade them to anymore. And it's super annoying. I think that like that is that is a genre that could really use like a legitimized um a legitimate a legitimized return i mean again you've got hundreds of thousands of them the like candy crush best fiends you know all these games that are just mobile fuck fests that you play them and you're like this has some core cool ideas but it is so buried in the m microtransaction and getting me to spend extra money that I think that like there is something to be said about that. I, I don't want to yeah. say that there isn't some good uh, innovation in a puzzle game. There's a game called, uh, I want to say Tilty Towers, Twisty Towers, Tilty Towers, something like that. It's really cool. It's a Tetris, but it's it's Tetris if Tetris had physics. So like it's Tetris, oh. bo tex Tetris blocks that drop, but it's on an island. So if you go one too far one way or the other, the, the whole the whole thing falls. They they actually played it on Game Grumps and that looked really fun to me. Yeah. Is it Tilty Towers, I want to say? Something like that? That so sounds relatively familiar. There's a few out there that are definitely standouts that exist. I think overall, though, there's definitely something to be said about that potentially getting a resurgence. Yeah. Um, what's... To kind of go off a little bit on your sure. point that you were talking about with the puzzle games. Go off. There was a period of time where I was really getting slid into Candy Crush mm -hmm. um, because it's, you know, it's the same sort of thing that I'm like really into match the shapes, make mm -hmm. the make little pieces explode sort of thing. But what irked me every single time was when you ran out of move, mm -hmm. the whole thing, all oh, oh, don't leave now. Give us Give 99 us cents. And you can have five more moves to finish this. And I'm like, I I get it. They have to make money somehow. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I, I can push a lot of that off to the side. Yeah. But there just gets to be a point to where it then, like you mentioned, it really feels like there's no other way other than to pay it unless you do every single move. Yeah. Exactly that's supposed to happen because all that stuff. Well, stuff's the thing is, I yeah, like. it's, I mean, it's random. They randomize the levels. So there's levels where, like, you can't even get the fucking things that you need and you're going to have to spend money on them. Yeah, I mean, there's no one out there who hasn't played Candy Crush or a Candy Crush type game at some point in their life. It just. It's just the way it works. It's just like, it sucks that they're like that. Um, my second one that I want to talk about is not necessarily dwindling in popularity, although there have been studies recently that say it is, uh, and that is 4X. Explore, eradicate, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the 4Xs are, the EXs, but uh, 4X games uh, really flow my boat. Age of Wonders, Civilization games where it's like huge swaths of time going by while you 
run a kingdom or civilization and kind of advance through it. Um, I love these games, man. I especially love them when, like, Age of Wonders. I love Age of Wonders because it is every inch of your play experience, if, if you're just, like, going in and playing it, not playing any of the story mission, every inch of your play experience is unique to you. Uh, and there's not a lot of games that are like that because they procedurally generate the map based on whatever criteria you put down for the map. There's factors like you'd be like, it's a winter world or it's a water world or whatever, um, or it's completely random. Um, it's completely different heroes every time. Uh, you create the races that you're creating in Age of Wonders from the ground up. They're fantasy races. Um... I've, I love games like that. I love it. And this game is just one of those games that you go in and get to watch like the start and end of a civilization. The only thing I'll say that I don't like about um, civilization games like that is that there's always this built-in like way to win, um, which always drove me nuts. Like especially in like I just oh, want to see oh, an instant win strategy effectively. Well, you're all trying to win. Like it's a board yeah. game. Like that's what you're trying to do. And I'm like. I don't want to win. I just want to keep playing, checking in with this race every so often and keep playing. You know what I mean? Like, I, mm -hmm. I don't I don't necessarily want to win. Like, I get it if I've wiped everybody else out. Okay, but, like, I just want to keep playing. And there's no way to just, like, keep playing. It just There's always, like, a resolution of the game somehow. And that just, just always drove me nuts because I, I hated that. Because it would be like, oh, well, he's built... You know, six pyramids, and I gotta go kill him. If I don't kill him, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if I don't kill him, he's gonna win a cultural victory, whatever the fuck that means. Like, but other than that, I love those games. I, I love the, the start and the end of them. There has been a study recently that said that strategy games have actually decreased in popularity. They're one of the only genres that actually has decreased in popularity over the last 10 years. Um, like, legitimately, people don't wanna play them as much, which. Uh, I don't know. It's just weird considering how popular so many games of those genre are or how many, how much controversy around them are. You know, you have, like, near militant sim players, you know, who will just, like, play this game no matter what. You have those guys, uh, Skylines, City Skylines 2, uh, and, and how much of a nightmare that was. Uh, constantly gets IGN time on the story because... Their second game was a nightmare, and the fans that are so ravenous for that game are just so upset with them. Uh, so there's tons of, like, it seems to be, like, tons of those games coming out, and people seem to be purchasing them, but for whatever reason, it seems to be getting less popular. I love those games. I love them. I love a good 4X game. Love it. Yeah, I feel like that is, that's one genre that has never really uh, jived with me, Uh more so i think just because it's such a time sink mm. um because that's they are known for being they are very extended plays yeah um that said i i can see where the diminishment of the popularity is but i, I do wonder though how do they go about doing those like studies like yeah are, are they going right? out to like 100 people saying hey this what games genre do you want to play yeah yeah what games do you want to play how do you like how do you determine that the genre is dwindling in popularity yeah, that's just wild to me. it's weird it's very weird i do yeah. like those games i would say that like a playthrough of those games takes less time than most of the narrative games that you're playing um like if you play like a civilization like old civil civ rev civilization revolution that was a two-hour playthrough you know of a, of mm -hmm. a round um Age of Wonders 4 is definitely more involved, but I'm still getting through a playthrough in like 10, 12 hours, and then it's on to the next one. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I really enjoy the 4X genre, especially when it when it gets to me. I mean, not all of them. There's a lot of that are very text-based, like uh, Crusader Kings I, I had a hard time getting into. Um, but, uh, but yeah, when certain ones of those just get me uh, i'll tell you there's one uh genre that i really like and this is really i think gonna be the last one that i can come up with okay on the fly yeah, that's um that 
I, I wouldn't say is like a not popular, but I feel like I it's the surface has barely been scratched with. Uh, I feel like with racing games back in the day, you know, you had your main staples, you know, you had your uh, need for speeds and everything like that. And those games still exist here today, but you don't get as many of the genuine like Mario Karts and uh, like F zeros. F zero hasn't had an entry since 2005, 2003, something like that with F zero GX aside from, you know, they recently did that F zero 99 thing on uh, Nintendo online. Um, but you know, something like Mario Kart, they had Mario Kart. Uh, the most recent one, Mario Kart eight came out and they've just re released it and ported it over to the switch. And Nintendo has been on record saying, you know, we're not going to release another one until there's a major evolution in those games to warrant them putting another one out. I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is just me, but maybe you could try to innovate, yeah, <laughs> not just maybe. wait for an innovation to happen. Maybe. One day. Maybe. Uh, you know, there's, there's so many different things out there. I mean, like, uh, I remember back in the day I had on Nintendo 64, uh, it was a Lego racer game mm -hmm. and they even just relatively recently like a year or so ago um brought out uh released a, a lego racing game you know mm -hmm. even something like that like a build your own car and yeah. race it you know like hover cars you know do do something in the vein of something like that i mean there's some games out there that have captured the spirit what is it i believe it's wipeout mm -hmm. um that has captured the spirit of f-zero uh, you know, mm -hmm. Mario Kart effectively is copying F Zero now in the stuff that it does and expanding a little bit upon its base formula. But the the racing games aren't really, you know, they they kind of fall in line of party games anymore, or almost. Mm -hmm. I would say. I mean, I think you got those high end ones like Forza and Grand. Turismo. Yeah, I mean, you have those. It's it's like a fifty fifty grab bag. You know, you get yeah. those or, you know, I have somebody like my one uncle back when the PS3 came out. He bought a PS3 strictly for Forza because he's huge into vehicles. And that is it. That is the only game he ever played on it and the only game that he ever played on. Well, he can't play Forza uh, on PS3, so. Or not Forza. Uh, <laughs> Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo. I I he bought the wrong system. <laughs> I, always, I always mix those I two know. up. Um, they're interchangeable in a lot of ways yeah i mean yeah but that that's I, the sort of i like racing fire. games i'm with you on that forza horizon i feel like has gone down a little bit since the ones that i liked but uh yeah i like a good racing game um i there, there's also a lot of interesting places you could go with cars that people haven't yet i'm really excited for that warhammer speed freaks that what game looks that? like so much for what you haven't what seen the answer that? That? oh my god it's coming out soon they're in an open I'm beta looking, right I'm, now I'm, I'm, I'm looking it is it, right it is basically just orcs uh and you have crazy ass warhammer cars and it's a it's a multiplayer thing and you just kill each other it's fucking amazing it looks great it's gonna be free to play it looks like i am super excited about it like and that's another thing that like it almost looks like twisted metal like from the twisted metal. yes days. it does yeah like warhammer twisted yes, metal it does i'm really excited about that uh, i think there's a lot of a lot of space in that one um i gotta say though my last one is uh gonna be the most niche of niche because i only know of five games that exist in this genre and two of them have closed down so uh there is that uh but third person f melee based fighting games uh i and i'm not talking like third person like tekken i'm talking like true third person like you're behind your character and fighting i love these games obviously for honor we've talked about it a little bit and if you've been watching the channel i'm suddenly making for honor content again uh this is the third time in the eight year existence of for honor that it has pulled me back in like a moth to the flame um and i'm having a ton of fun with it all over again um but naraka blade point was another one that i absolutely love i go back to on a regular basis um 
And then there was there was well, I guess two others. I thought there was a third one that I. Uh, but uh, Rumbleverse closed down and Warhammer both have closed down, but they were also both third person uh, uh, fighters. Um, there's not a lot of them. There's not a lot of true third person no. fighters, not melee based. Um, but uh, God, I love them. God bless them. I love them. Um, and yeah, I I don't even know if you'd call it a genre because there's so few of them. But uh, but yeah, like I I'm kind of surprised that like like For Honor is the only one that's really like For Honor and Blade Point and uh, Naraka are the only two that have kind of like lasted in that space. You know, um, everybody else who's tried has obviously shut down. Um, and yeah, I I want more, uh, but I don't know how we get more at this point, you know? Yeah, I feel like it's one of those, you know, nowadays in AAA gaming space, it's, well, how do you monetize it? Like, right. not like, is there a demand for it? Is there a want for it? do people you know will people buy it if it comes out it's well when it's out there how are you going to charge more money for it? and that's one of those genres that i feel like um, they being the AAA companies would be concerned that there's not enough uh, push behind it to really warrant putting it out it's part of the reason why the dead space series died out i mean They're i like, guess nobody wants yeah I don't Nobody disagree. Wants horror games, and you know, come to find out, right. everybody wants horror, horror games. games yeah. You know? I mean, I don't disagree, but at the same time, For Honor's been around for eight years now, uh, mm -hmm. still, still going relatively strong and making that company money. Um, yeah. Same with Naraka Blade Point. So, like, I feel like there's definitely money to be made there. Um, I, I was bothered that Warhaven shut down as fast as it did. I had just gotten into it when it decided to shut down too. Which was a, a huge bummer for me. Like, I had done a, a review, and the review was going to go up in two weeks, and it closed down. So I, I just put up the review and was just like, I know it's closed, but hey, I did this review. And then <laughs> Rumbleverse, I was deeply saddened that that got shut yeah. down. I think we talked I about that. that. I mm -hmm. loved that game. That was my Battle Royale. And me and uh uh Azul Young played that one together we had a ton of fun with that game it, the combat was really interesting and different um it brought some some different stuff to the table and i i just i loved playing it um so for that one to shut down that was a real like heart wrencher as far as i'm concerned but for honor continues and i continue to play it uh and yeah i would love to see newer games in this genre that would be great. Like I said, I can only think of two of them <laughs> at this particular point, you know? Yeah, I I feel like there will be something on the horizon eventually. Yeah. It's just a matter of, you know, time and place sort of situation. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think we've covered all our off-brand off genres, right? I do believe. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got an off-brand or a weird genre that you love... It, it, let us know in the comments. We'll talk about it. Love to hear about it. Otherwise, we are going to shoot on over to the news. Neil's going to hit us with some news stories, and uh, then we'll be done. Be right back. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it brings us to our last segment, and that is the news. That is where Neil collects headlines that you may or may not need to hear about, and uh, he reads them off, and we riff about them. So, Neil, what do you got for us this week? <laughs> All right, a couple little bits and bobs of uh, things here. So uh, I guess uh, Multiversus is either it's all it's officially back on already or will be relaunching here soon. They did this weird thing where it launched and they decided to nuke all of it for like a year, year and a half, and they're just going to relaunch it. Uh, because I believe it's already launched again. I, I was going to say, I think it might be back already. I can't yeah. remember exactly. It's but, been uh, back. Yeah, the uh, characters coming, I think. Yeah, and that's actually what I was going to mention. Mm. Uh, Jason Voorhees and Agent Smith are going to be characters uh, in season one. I and remember, the Joker. And the Joker, yes. I remember we, uh, we actually, I think I still have it on here. I could be wrong. No, it's still on here. I remember at one point we talked about doing like a stream of it, you and I, and then... Um, 
Then there was the died. announcement about yeah. it. Yeah, dying. But I still have the initial launcher installed here on my computer, <laughs> so it still exists. We might have to do that at some point. I, uh, yeah, you know, Multiverse is a weird one. WB is an insane studio that does stupid yeah. shit, um, especially since this was a moneymaker, and then they just ignored it for half a year and then shut it down and didn't refund anybody anything. Uh, and then they decided to bring it back randomly. <laughs> Um, good on the people who like this game. Like, I'm glad they get to play this game again. And from what I understand, it is just as good as it was before. So it is a viable contender to Smash Brothers. It's interesting that this game is definitely like, it's got a very kid-friendly art style. But we are starting to get very non-kid-friendly <laughs> characters into yeah. the game. Uh, I would argue Joker isn't that kid-friendly, but aside from that, Jason Voorhees and Agent Smith are most certainly not kid-friendly. So uh, it's it's very interesting that we're not starting to get, like, cartoony versions of, like... Like, I can't wait for the cartoony version of Hannibal Lecter to show up in this thing, you know? Yeah, uh, <laughs> apparently, uh, from what I understand, Arya Stark is uh, <laughs> is in this as well. From, yeah, she uh, was Game already in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> So it's all over the map. It's a very strange, very strange prospect, that game. That said, I'm here for it. Yeah, um, so am I. I love that sort of stuff. I'm yeah. a sucker for crossovers. Speaking of crossovers, segueing right on in. Um, so apparently all of the Kingdom Hearts games are going to be coming to Steam in June. Uh, funny enough, there's been a big to-do about it on the internet uh, because there have been people who had the ability to buy it on the Epic Games Store and have literally refused in hopes that uh, all of those games will be coming to Steam. Uh, <laughs> so it, they are going to be coming to Steam here, and from uh, all of the rumors and everything, there's going to be more information uh, this summer about the Kingdom Hearts 4, I guess. Absolute shocker. It's been completely rebooted and redone from the initial announcement that we were given a couple years back. Uh, this is pretty par for the course on any Kingdom Hearts game and the development for it. Uh, but yeah, uh, it'll be nice to have all those games. It's the entire series all in one place. So, And apparently they're going to be optimized for Steam Deck as well. Well, that'll be another uh, place I don't play it. Um, yeah, that I mean... game is such a train wreck. I cannot believe they're doing a fourth one. I mean, at least the guy who did them is over ruining Final Fantasy now and not weirdly trying to put that continent. Well, yeah, he's, he's been fucking that continuity up all the hell. He's been well, he's been doing that since uh, yeah, Tetsuya Nomura, I believe, yeah. since. Final Fantasy XIII, mm -hmm. uh, he's had his hands in, in the mix. Nomura, uh, no fucking up continuity things. since 2010. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, good luck with that, anybody who's playing. But I'm glad yeah. it's in another place that people can get it. And if people have been holding out, they can finally, uh, they can finally play it where they want to play it. Cross play. Cro blocking cross anything is stupid. Exclusivity is stupid. Yes. Very much so. Um, so, uh, yet again, referencing uh, the uh, announcements coming this summer, uh, Microsoft is going to be having their show on the 9th. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be, you know, a new, they all but confirmed at this point, it's what, Black Ops 5, Black Ops 6, six. whatever Black Ops Black Ops 6, six now, yeah. uh, is going to be the Call of Duty that's going to be shown off. Um, that said, there were some rumors a while back and leaked documentation during all of the many lawsuits that Microsoft was involved in that the next Doom game is coming. Well, a bit more information has leaked. Apparently, the next Doom game is going to be called Doom Dark Ages, uh, and it's expected to be uh, revealed during Microsoft's showcase. According to this leak slash rumor, I guess it's going to be taking place in a medieval setting. Uh, so it's not going to be actually like shotguns and shit. It's going to be like crossbows and shit. Um, but I, I will be very interested to see how that shakes out overall. I'm sure they are going to have something like a shotgun still available. That series <laughs> is all about suspension of disbelief. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, interesting. I am very nervous about all games coming out that are AAA. We've talked about this yeah. at length recently. I'm waiting to see what microtransactions get crammed up Doom Guy's ass. Um, and uh, I'm not super excited for anything that Xbox is going to show. Call of Duty 6 has no effect on me. Those games have stopped being anything more than a way to steal money out of your pocket for a long time. Um... And, uh, yeah, they're not even good to their own community. They're just, I don't know, don't like that shit. Uh, Plus, it's going to be the way that Game Pass raises their prices, which I'm not all for. I've heard a lot of that. I've heard a lot of that. That's how they're going to, like, explain it, and uh, that's going to be obnoxious. The thing that I am really annoyed by is for there is a very small, very quiet rumor saying that we are going to get... Uh, more information about uh, Light No Fire at the Xbox Game Show. Um, yeah, it's been a year. It, it, I mean, it hasn't been a year since we we heard about it at the Game Awards. That was in December. That was the Game Awards? Yeah. I thought it was during the Summer Showcase. No, no, no. Game Awards. Game Awards. Oh. Game Awards. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're due some some information about it Uh, i mean my lizard brain is upset that we haven't gotten information about it my logical brain is thank god sean murray isn't shooting his mouth off like he did with no man's (laughs) yeah (laughs) no man's sky to 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 make a bed he can't possibly lay in um but that being said uh i think if it is shown at the xbox um gaming showcase it is a real good possibility that it's going to be in game pass day one which would be very interesting no man's sky was a playstation exclusive for like two years before it came to xbox uh and a lot of people kind of equate the fixing of no man's sky when it came to xbox not necessarily because it came to xbox but the the changes that they had made to fix it kind of really started to kick off when they went you know cross brand or whatever mm-hmm. uh so i i i would be not surprised if sean murray has done a deal to put no man's sky into games past day one um not no man's sky uh light no fire uh i and i would not be surprised if we don't see some surprise light no fire information at this june 9th uh game show I would even cross my fingers and hope that it's a surprise release. They could really I, use one of those. Yeah, well, the last time they shadow dropped something, they closed the studio a year later. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but they don't know they don't own them. So right, like they can't, right. I'm just saying they can't close you know, Hello like Games. A, <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely. Release. I'm just saying it's like a curse. It Something's is. gonna happen. Still, it's like opening King Tut's tomb. It's a matter I, of time. I think they need something like that because I think they are smart enough to know that in PR they look terrible. And oh, yeah. while it doesn't really matter that they look terrible in PR because they own everything now, uh, they still want to look good. So I I think that, that that's a good possibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, next one here, uh, apparently the, uh, switch has taken over the, uh, Nintendo DS as the best selling system ever, at least over in Japan. Yeah. Um, so, uh, that's, that's great. I yeah. think it's cool. Uh, I think it's also, I feel like it's something that's long overdue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone and their mother has a switch. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're now you can get your hands on like with the switch light the brand new one for 200 bucks you could probably easily get a used one for like mm-hmm. 110 120 bucks at this point yeah uh so just cool little nugget of yeah, information that sounds interesting that's cool also cool little <laughs> nugget of information uh did you know that it is actually possible to deflect arrows in skyrim with a sword i did not know that so oh, there's wow. a guy there's Still a guy learning new stuff up, Yes, there's a guy who put up a video on YouTube. Uh, I did not write this uh, down as to who it was, but uh, dude actually discovered in fighting, he was fighting an archer and just recording everything. And he swung the sword as the archer shot the arrow and it actually tinged down. 
and now the entire internet is uh, trying to, you know, figure out different ways you can block stuff with things. <laughs> so, like, uh, they were saying, like, you know, sometimes if when you drop stuff, it just, like, puts it right in front of you and then drops. Mm -hmm. Like, what if you just drop something right in front of you and the arrow hits it? Uh, people are now wondering, too, if you can actually even catch arrows out of the air. Uh, that would be very impressive. But honestly, I think it's cool that, well, at first, I think it's crazy that nobody figured this out sooner. Um, yeah. With how long this game has been around and how popular it is, mm -hmm. I am astounded that this hasn't been discovered sooner. Yeah. Um, but I second, agree. it's just like cool ass attention to detail. Cool ass attention to detail that is not super present in games nowadays, or at least uh, cool attention to detail that matters, I guess. You know, we're not talking about Rockstar having, you know, horse balls shrink, you know. Um, yeah. This is yeah. like actual like gameplay stuff <laughs> that's cool. Oh, those horse balls. It's it's still every once in a while, like, I think about it and just think about the team. Yeah. The team of people who had to drive to a horse farm and take pictures of horse balls when they were warm and then wait till winter and take pictures of the same <laughs> horse balls when they're cold and then take all that back to the lab and, like, spend tens of thousands of hours animating those horse balls to look exactly like we the pictures. We can them. Yeah. We have the technology. It's insane to me. Um... You know, I'm not Bethesda's biggest fan right now. Uh, I think Todd Howard. Uh, I think I think Skyrim made Todd Howard think he couldn't do any wrong, and he hasn't mm -hmm. made he hasn't made anything new since Skyrim because of that. That being said, Skyrim is the fucking mark of genius. I hate to say it. Uh, that game is one of those that just stands the test of time again and again and again. Like we're well past 10 years in and people are like oh you can block arrows with a sword we never fit you know it's just one mm. of those things that like it's one of those games that people are going to be like finding stuff in it for until we're dead and gone and that's uh that's just something i love about that uh game and, and it's one of those reasons that i will end up going back to it over and over and over again so uh gonna finish off on like the dumb stupid weird one and uh, GameStop's going to GameStop. Um, <laughs> so uh, we missed this a little while ago. Apparently GameStop now is buying and selling Pokemon cards and mm. other various trading cards. Now, Aren't they're they not just taking... Any? Well, they they were like not just like card packs. Oh, I we're see. We're talking individual cards you. now. I now, they you. will only take ones that are rated. So actual like collector's versions of them they have a very in-depth process it's like an 11 step process to determine the legitimacy of the cards it's crazy it's wild i don't know why they put so much time in, and effort into this for something that's never going to yield a return on investment no. because the no. people who have those cards like that they're going to sell them they're not going to go to gamestop no they're going to go to other you know actual viable collection places they're going to go to an uh, auction site or an auction so that they can site get or yeah 25 to 50 percent more yeah well yeah, uh to kind of segue segue into that to dig a little deeper on that there's a uh, youtuber steinfield uh, did a video where uh, he went to a store, a uh, GameStop, with rated cards. Um, and he had $328 worth of rare cards. Would you hazard a guess what GameStop gave him in value? 110. 157. Okay. I was close. I was close, yes. wasn't I? I did a lot yes. of trade ins with GameStop. That's how I know that they were trying to fuck him over. Uh, yeah, uh, about 50% of the actual value of them. Uh, further proving that GameStop is just a shitty pawn shop that nobody really wants to go to anymore. It, that is exactly uh, it. It's a shitty yeah, pawn shop. It, it really nobody is. Nobody wants to go to anymore. It, is... I, I, will, I will miss them when they are gone. But, I mean, the purchase of games anymore, I cannot remember. I think Cyberpunk... Mm -hmm. was the last game I bought from GameStop. Yeah. Um, everything else has been like an Amazon pre-order or just kind of walk into the store and purchase it after the fact, after it's launched. 
Uh, pre-orders, I really don't even mess with anymore. Nah, I, don't, I don't mess with them anymore. The only reason I still used them for a while was they had this like five dollars. You could get like five dollars uh, every, oh, yeah, every yeah, month yeah. if you had an account. Mm-hmm. You get five dollars. So I would go in. And I would buy ten dollars worth of Steam gift cards, and I'd put five into it. I'd be like, "That's a pretty good value." Uh, they stopped selling the Steam gift cards. Yeah. <laughs> They're a game shop that stops selling Steam gift cards. I'm like, "Well, I'm never I coming mean, back here. I'm never I, coming back here." <laughs> I mean, I guess to their point, to some degree, though it's a stupid point. Um, they would probably be looking at it as, a, "Well, we're just." further feeding the digital machine you know That's and true, I guess. further out out placing ourselves but you know i still feel like there's a, a, a spot for gamestop uh like there will be some times where i get like a little nostalgic for a game on like you know xbox one or ps4 mm-hmm. or something like that and instead of going, you know, online and doing this, that, and the third, walking into a GameStop and just picking up a copy. Yeah. But there's a couple things that stop me from doing that. One, they're just even more overpriced now. And the poor, unfortunate workers who have to just, just disparatively yeah. beg you to beg purchase you to things yeah. and subscriptions. <clears> like, <throat> dude, I'm just here for this thing. Yeah. Like even yeah. when I was younger and went there all the time, it, it was still a little too pushy. And now it's like their whole families depend on them selling their power up rewards yeah. membership. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, so that was your last one. That was it. Uh, I don't want to actually have a conversation about this, but I do just want to say there is a small rumor that Microsoft is attempting to buy Steam, Valve. Um, and I would like to implore Valve, if anybody in Valve listens to this show on the off chance, please, please don't do that. You are the last bastions of hope against Microsoft. And if for some reason Microsoft did buy you, I mean, really, we're done at that point, right? Like, Microsoft owns all video games, period. So I would prefer that not to happen. Yeah, uh, yeah. To to try to not get too deep in the no, because it would turn into a negative conversation real quick. Yeah, uh, I don't, don't want to like have a yeah, full Zach, conversation. Zach did send this to me the other day, and we had a very brief. Uh, when I say brief, like three message exchange about it. Because Neil uh, has hope, and I don't I, have it. Yeah, anymore. basically, I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't think that this would happen because of the absolute massive implications that it would have overall, because like you mentioned, Microsoft would own all of video games at that point. There's, there's no other which way to look around and look at it. There, there would be absolutely like, I don't to not get political. I have no faith in the politicians and stuff Uh in our government at all Uh right now, but if they allowed a sale of that magnitude to go through, it would be like fucking Ford buying Chevy at Honda and Hyundai. Like, sure, go ahead. Yeah. It's just Ford, Ford owns cars now. Like it's the same sort of thing. There's nowhere else to go. And the places yeah. that are left are going to be swallowed up by the singularity. Yeah. 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 I don't disagree with anything you said, other than the fact that I don't believe that there is a person who would stop that. I don't know. I think if the FTC was going to stop anybody, they would have stopped them with the Activision thing. They failed to fucking do that. I think Microsoft could buy anybody they fucking want, as long as that person is willing to sell. So the only person keeping Valve from being bought by Microsoft is Valve. So fingers fucking crossed because otherwise gaming sucks. Like gaming's going to really suck. Like I don't know if I will be able to do this show anymore on the day when Valve sells to Microsoft. Like that will be the last bastion of hope falling in the distance and us all laying down our swords realizing we were never doing anything anyway. Uh, So yeah, so please Valve. If this rumor, if there is any validity to this rumor, please don't sell to Microsoft. Please do not. Please no. If, if you want to sell, sell to anybody else. Hell, sell to Sony. 
just don't sell to them. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do plugs and go home. We're I'm already, already home. home. Yeah, we're already home. Go to bed. <laughs> well, I don't get to go to bed. I have to edit this, but you don't yeah. get to go to. I get to go to bed. I get to go to bed. I'll that's just bed. that's it's just pause, pause, pause. Horrible gaming podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that brings us to the end of the show and the shameless self promotion that comes with it. You know, would you like to plug? It? So <laughs> now that uh, my life has eased up a bit with uh, external <laughs> external factors keeping me from doing things. Uh, we are going to be looking this Wednesday to be doing a uh, an, a return of the lasso stream. Mm -hmm. um, we'll actually be doing something a little bit different. It's still going to be going back to Halo, but it's going to be doing a part of Halo 4 that I never did before. The Spartan Ops, um, which is basically like episodic firefight uh, missions that tell a very loose story. Um, so that will be interesting. Uh, I cannot wait to do that. Uh, Zach is already bereaved. All right. <laughs> the fact that he has well, to I want no part of this. Halo. I had to reinstall <laughs> 136 gigabytes of shit to play this game. This is true friendship right here. I am also going to say I can't believe that you are actually plugging the specifics of what we're going to be doing on Wednesday as Master Chief Collection has so often let us down well, on the thing I mean, we're actually yeah. attempting to do yes. that I am not yes. convinced we're going to be doing Spartan Ops because I'm not sure we're going to not spend the first 10 to 15 minutes of the stream trying to figure out why everybody's audio isn't working. That is because fair. Because it's a master fucking Chief that Collection. Is, that is absolutely fair. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, <laughs> honestly, went from back when we were doing Halo Road um there's oh. a very real possibility that it could not even fucking happen uh <laughs> halo infinite road oh my nemesis um, uh but there's still one leg to the there's still one leg to the journey but that will be someday one day maybe they have to give us online co-op capabilities of crossplay. uh if they don't we can't do it last time i checked that's the reason right no, they just no. don't have cro they don't have multiplayer, right? No, it's not that. It's Game Pass Ultimate. You have to be able to stream Xbox games to your PC, right? To be able to play Halo right. 5's campaign, right? Well, because there is no PC version of Halo 5. Correct. That's the fucked up thing. There's no mm. PC version of Halo 5. There's Which PC just blows version, my mind. Because that's mind. when Microsoft really was pushing at that if there PC was, yeah. on everything. That's the whole reason the Master mm -hmm. Chief collection even happened. And initially, they were only going to do like... One, two, three, ODST, and three. Mm -hmm. And then, surprise, they said straight up and down, we're never going to do Reach. Guess what? Reach comes in, uh, and they haven't add, yeah. found a way to add five into it at all. They never confusing. did a PC port. It's very, very confusing. confusing. They just straight up pretended it didn't exist for PC, except for Forge mode, question mark? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Real weird. Um, that would be going on tonight if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, tomorrow, if you're listening to this day one on Spotify. Um, just so that everybody knows. Um, and, I go, and I can, of course, if it happens. Um, as yes. far as me, um, right now I am doing, well, first of all, shirts. Buy shirts. Uh, we have shirts to sell. Uh, the the quantity not quality shirts. Uh, there's one in black and one in white. You can go to wizardsrespite.com to find them. Um, I probably included an ad before this video that talks about it a little bit. Uh, so please go check those out. Uh, as far as content on the channel, the things that I'm really proud of right now are my For Honor stuff. Uh, I'm doing highlights videos once a week. Um, I usually show myself dying quite a bit because highlights videos are weird for me because I'm pretty self-deprecating. Um, but uh, but uh, yeah, they're, they're fun. And usually then I'm also people show the good things. I show good things. I definitely show good things. I definitely have some definite like one v twos in there that I'm very proud of. But there's quite a few where it's like this is just a really good fight and I die and I just want people to see it. You know what I mean? Um, because if somebody kills me in a good fight, it's just as good as if I won for For Honor. That's just how I like it. Um, 
And then I'm also doing For Honor Fantasy Hero, which is uh, I am basically creating fantasy characters for For Honor that have never been released, just in my head. Uh, and that's really exciting for me. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so check those out. Um, and then, yeah, we've got everything else, the normal stuff. Or, uh, you know, uh, Old Man General Manager. Got reviews on occasion. I uh, got the streams here and there. Got the prelude here and there. And then we've got a good amount of TTRPG stuff that you can check out. You guys can also reach us on Facebook at OldMangamingDH, on Twitter at OldMangaming9. You can join our Discord links in the description below. Influence this and all of our shows from there. As long as you guys keep watching and listening, we'll be making. See you guys next time.